Okay, good evening. Uh, as you can see, I've got Home Designer Architectural version 10 open. <clears throat> and I thought I'd just take a couple of moments here and point out some things. One's uh, the tutorial videos uh, hyperlink, it's her icon, whatever you want to call it. Left click on that, it'll open your browser and take you to the tutorials that are based for the various titles. There's Pro, Architectural, uh, Suite, Essentials, Interiors, Landscape and Deck Designer. <clears throat> And uh, they're searchable. Uh, what started this tutorial was uh, dimensions. And so there's the ones on dimensions. I, I looked through them quickly to see if it answered the specific question, which was move object by dimension dialog, which in earlier versions, the dialog box actually had that, that text on it, just like the uh, edit toolbar. Uh, only says edit on it if you drag it off from its uh, default uh, docked position, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. But these things are invaluable, and, and you, all you guys should watch these one at a time, <laughs> one at a time, and then practice what the tutorial shows until you feel like you have an understanding, a conceptual understanding of exactly what, what they're talking about. Don't read the manual like a novel. Read a paragraph or two, and then open the software and do what it, is describing until you are certain that you can do what it's talking about. And what it's talking about is based on the words and the definitions of those words used to describe it. If you, you find yourself not being able to do what you just studied, it's because there's a word or symbol in there, what you studied, that you don't fully understand yet. Get it defined. Okay. So I'm going to close this. Well, I'm going to close this part of it. This is the uh, post that initiated this uh, tutorial, this one here about uh, <clears throat> locate by dimension dialog. And it's kind of tricky because, like I say, that in version seven, six, seven, and 8, the dialog actually set, had that text on it, and now it no longer does. So that's what, and I checked the tutorials to make sure that uh, that's kind of, it was just an oversight. Uh, the pro product uh, changes and improves and so forth. and. Uh, they're talking about things that are no longer labeled as those things. So I'm going to demonstrate that. And click on New Plan. Now you should really look at this dialog sometime and go through and, and see what each of these buttons offer you. Everything you need to know, pretty much, about the program is right here at your fingertips. There's also an overview video, help contents, and index. Let's just look at New Plan. I'm going to left click on that. I'm just going to use the default style. That's a whole other tutorial about what, what these are for and what, why you should use them or not use them. <clears throat> I'm not covering that today. Uh, this just comes up because I had it set to a size that doesn't work in architectural. I'm not going to explain that further. Okay, you can see I have my grid turned off because I'm an old fogey and I don't use the grid. Never have. Um, that's other over here under Edit Default Settings. I think uh, Plan. Yeah, see, I've got the grid turned off. You know, you can turn that stuff on. I, I don't use it. Some of you do. I'd say that's fine. Okay. So let's get some objects to locate. I'm going to draw a box. The thing from which everything, all blessings flow in Chief Architect is a closed space, which you can then select, open its room dialog box, and there's all kinds of things you can start prog programming into that space. Again, that's another tutorial. I'm not chasing that one right now. We're going to get the interior wall tool. I'm going to draw some interior walls. Okay. Now, I'm going to select the wall. I right-clicked on it so you can see this contextual thing. You can just left-click on it and do the same thing in terms of select. And here's what I'm talking about all the time, all the time, the edit toolbar. I just left-click, dragged it off of there, and it says edit on it. And Amongst these are various things that I can do with the selected object, which in this case is an interior wall. I can open its dialog. I can copy, make a copy. Thunk. <laughs> There's a copy of that wall. I can, well, delete it directly if I want to. 
I can accurately move it. Now, this tutorial isn't about accurate move, but it just allows you to ac ac more accurately move something. You should practice with it and find out what it does. Parallel and perpendicular tool. We're not covering that today, but it's quite useful. Centering tool. Change line to arc. Let's take a look at that one. That won't take but a moment. Bingo. It's, now it's an arc. Now it's straight. Now it's an arc, a curved wall. Now it's a straight wall. Quite useful sometimes. <clears throat> reverse layers isn't all that useful for an interior wall, but <clears throat> if you don't draw your walls in a clockwise fashion when you when you I don't know if you noticed, but I drew these clockwise. I drew these exterior walls and the interior walls in a clockwise direction based on uh, the way the clock turns. And that determine drawing in a clockwise fashion determines uh, where the layers go. Let me do, I'll take a minute for that. I'm going to select the exterior wall tool and drag left to right like a clock and it puts the exterior layer on the outside. If I was to go counterclockwise, it puts a layer on the inside. That's why it's important. It's, but even with interior walls, sometimes you'll get an, an error message saying that uh, some walls or uh, layers are turned the wrong way. And all it's talking about is uh, that you didn't draw whatever wall you drew in a clockwise fashion. And from the point of the moronic software, it's turned the wrong way. So that's all that's talking about. So it's a good habit to develop to draw in clockwise fashion. Okay. I'm going to go back to select items. Now, if, if you're not in select items, that's this one here, select objects. It used to be called select items a thousand years ago, I guess. Um, you can left click on things. Even though I'm in wall mode, you can left click. Or in some cases, you can. It's I like to right click. And you get this selection here. Or you can get use the edit toolbar there. They're basically the same thing. Right-clicking will give you this contextual menu, and it's the same thing as this edit uh, toolbar menu. I'm going to put that back where it's, it's default position. Let me line up those toolbars. Yeah, okay. Now, I've got the selected. That's a flip layers tool. Change to gable walls, well, an interior wall. I don't want to make a gable wall, so I'm not going to use that command. That would be more germane to uh, an exterior wall. If I wanted to make that a gable, then being, you saw it automatically put a gable type roof over that. Over that. I, mean, I saw it in plan view. So you change that hip roof into a gable roof. That's all it's about. That changed it back. I've never even used that tool. It's the first time I looked at it. Okay. Now, to the subject at hand. Let's say I want to move this wall here, based on these dimension points, to 8 feet. Well, I'm going to put my cursor over this dimension string about the center. And you see the cursor changes. See, it changes from an arrow to a hand. That's a selection hand, or I call it a selection hand. I don't know what the manual call, calls it, but I'm going to left-click on that. And that is the Move Object by Dimension dialog. See, it no longer says that on it, but that's what it is. I can move just the object, or move the edge, or I can move the entire object. Now, for a wall, a wall is by default a unified object, so uh, it doesn't matter which one of these that you select to move it. <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate this a little bit later where this is a, a salient difference. But I want to now put make this 8 feet exactly. I'll type in 8 feet and then hit the enter button. And it moves it to 8 feet. That's what I was talking about in my post. I'll click over here. You click on the dimension that you want to control this selected object. Now, if I click here, on the, well, see, I can't even get a selection hand because you can't use this tool to change the length of the wall, but you can change its x-axis. That x is minus x is left and plus x is right. Sorry about that geekiness, but that's just part of it. Now, I'll click here. If you click right correctly, you'll get the dialog. If you don't click correctly, you won't get the dialog. It's just a matter of practice and knowing where to click. We'll change that to 8 feet and then enter. So that's all that's about. <clears throat> let's, now let's get something uh, that's, yeah, I'll go to CAD, under CAD tools. Look at this draw polyline tool here. I'll draw that and I'll click on that. You see I get a, whoops, I didn't hold my mouth right. Let me get into select objects. You get an automatic dimension there. You see the cursor change to that select hand as a what's called a precursor. In other words, if I left click, I'll select that. If I if I don't left click, and you know, I just 
I won't get anything. So I'm going to click there. And I can move this selected line here using this, or I can move the whole object. That's what I was talking about. Let's move that to uh, 18 inches. But just the edge. See, it says move edge. We'll hit enter and move the edge. Let's say this box here is a, a concrete footing or something. I'm going to change it to 24 by 24, interior to itself. See, I'm clicking on the dimensions I want to use to alter the object. And let's say that this represents in my plan a 20, 24 inch by 24 inch footing. And I want this footing. Now, you can see I've got my cursor there, but I'm not getting the hand. And that's a matter of zoom. I'm going to wheel in until the cursor uh, changes. There we go. So you have to wheel in to get that action of the cursor changing. Now left click on that, I get the moved object by dimension dialog. And let's say I want this um, six inches of the other, this edge of this object. I don't want to change the dimensions of the object, but I want to change the location to six inches just the other side of this roof edge. I don't know if that makes sense to you um, or not, but that's just for this demonstration. I'm going to put in a minus six inches and choose move entire object as the attribute and then hit the enter key and it moved the entire object or at least the selected side of it six inches past what I had it dimensioning to. I want to use this dimension and again I want to maintain the, the size of this object here and I'd use the move entire object and I'll move that to uh, let's say minus eight inches. If you don't put in the inch mark it'll, it'll just assume you mean inches by the way. So you've got, you can drag things around. I'm using a control key, left click, left click, click drag, and I want to put it right there. Let's say that's where we'd have a footing. And we'll make it more draftsman-like. I'll change the line style here of this object from this straight line to a, a dashed one. And that's how you could say, well, you would beef up the foundation here. But if you, if I click here and I don't, I use the default here and just move the edge. We'll set that selected line to a zero and, hit it. and see it stretches it out. It only does what you tell it to do and so it's good for uh, users to practice and find out what, what, you, what the, how to get things done. I'm going to put it back where it was. <clears throat> and that's, that's what the uh, move object by dimension dialog is all about. Let's move the whole thing to minus 36. And that's relative to where the, where the dimension string is going, okay? See, I moved it out there. So you can use positive values. We move the whole thing 24 inches. And you can use minus values. We'll move this entire object. Again, I'm going to left click on that to select that. Minus 48 inches. And that's how that works. And it's quite useful to help you get things done exactly and move things around. I don't, don't want to make the tutorial any longer because uh, I had to split it into two parts. So thank you for your kind attention. I hope this helps some people.